This is the old Doctor Who show, episode number 161. This is Empire of Death. <laughs> Welcome back to the old Doctor Who show. Um, your classic uh, and also new, and you're all around. I would say all around at this point. It's an all around Doctor Who review podcast. I am your host, Eric Grissom. I am alone again. Uh, Dan is still away. Dan is traveling the world, solving mysteries, uh, going from town to town as a drifter, running into the local uh, authorities when he can. Get out of the town, they'll say to him, and he just hides in the woods. But when he's there, he finds people in trouble and he helps them with their day-to-day tasks uh, for money, though. He doesn't do it for kindness. Uh, That's how he makes a living. No, Dan is gone. Uh, but not forever. Dan will be back. We're hoping next week we will do a big final wrap up. We'll cover uh, all of this entire season and all the madness that uh, has followed. And he'll give us his thoughts in the last two episodes. Um, okay, before we start, I have a, a correction to make. Last time when I uh, reviewed The Legend of Ruby Sunday, I had said uh, that Sutek was on Mars uh, sitting around in a folding chair. And I was incorrect, right? Because I, I rewatched Pyramids of Mars, still amazing. I did not watch the newer version from the Memory TARDIS that they just premiered which is like the omnibus format which the edits and the extra effects i watched the original sutek is actually in the pyramid in egypt and the power uh station or the power machine holding him in place that's on mars right so uh correction there for all of you classic doctor who heads uh that are hitting us up in the comments and telling me things like uh you don't know what you're talking about. Well, in that case, I didn't. I made a mistake. I'm very sorry. Uh, but not as sorry as I am to jump into our review of uh, Empire of Death. So let's just hit the button, shake the crime stick, do a little twirl, uh, get your magic jump rope out, and uh, let's do it. Shake the crime stick! I am the night, the terror. The earth is dying. I did this. I swear to you, with both the hearts of the last of the Time Lords, I will stop you. This is Empire Records. Not on Rex Manning Day. Uh, this is, no, this is, um, this is Empire of Death. This is the eighth and final episode of season one slash season 14 of, uh, of Doctor Who, of course. Um, I'm reviewing this immediately after this is, uh, I am, my eyes have just peeled away from the TV screen and now I am staring at myself because usually I'd be staring at Dan, but instead I'm staring at myself, staring back at me, which I feel like is appropriate for, uh, this particular episode. It was written by Russell T Davies, uh, and it was directed by Jamie Donahue. Uh, now, in this episode, after coming off the uh, crazy, tense, wonderful cliffhanger of last week when we realized that Sutek has been behind this, Sutek and the pantheon of of gods uh, that we've been building to is actually behind this whole uh, mess, we, are, we begin immediately as the doctor tries to stop Sutek's plans. Um... Yeah, so what did I think of the story? Uh, <laughs> what, like, uh, like, uh, Mavity? Um, uh, who's Ruby's mother? Uh, none of it uh, means anything. None of it means anything. Uh, I, 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 let me say the good things about it. Um, I like Mel. I like Mel. I like Vespas. 
generally. Um, I love the design of Sutek. I think it's very cool. I like the voice acting. I like the act, you know, the, the creature acting. I love the way it looks. I liked the uh, servants of, of Sutek. You know, it's a big leap from the robots in um, bandages uh, that we had. Um, but otherwise, uh, I really hated it. I did not, um, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, let's just start with the, um, so like a, 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 a sonic screwdriver can turn an old TV into an iPad, uh, with a universal connector that would work. So, okay. So what is the, what are we trying to say? Uh, with this we we learn a lot there's several scenes uh, that is a lot of exposition you're gonna get hey you want to know how we did that here's how we did that we're gonna tell you so and may and again I'm hot off the the vid, the viewing so it's it's a hundred percent possible I'm I did not understand something or yeah uh, you know I didn't have time to fully process it but to my understanding at the end of pyramids, of Mars, the doctor sends Sutek into the future, right? And he says, uh, I just watched it, so I should, uh, Sutek lasted 6,000 years, or I don't remember what he did, but he's he's in some kind, he's in the time tunnel, and he's going forward, and he's like, let me out, let me out, and the doctor's like, nope, and he just lets him sort of ride uh, until the end of his days. That did not happen in this world, so Sutek latched itself to the TARDIS and has been riding on the TARDIS um, unbeknownst to anyone since uh, that story concluded. So all of the other doctors, all of the other shows everywhere, the start and the end, Sutek's been there waiting, waiting for his moment, getting stronger, learning how TARDISes work, uh, learning all about uh, time and making his plan and then he Sutek was able to create an entity so the god of death was able to create life and he created this um, Susan Twist character that he would project through the use of the TARDIS's perception field uh, he was able to hijack that because it's 73 yards, and that's got to have something to do with 73 yards. Nah, I don't know. Uh, so they, they, he's he's projecting her, and each time the TARDIS lands and the Doctor goes somewhere, this version of Susan Twist that Sutek created um, and, and gets stronger so that by the time... She's in 2024. She's dancing at a tech conference because she's gotten so strong uh, and powerful that she is in tech. So if you've ever met anyone in tech, I. So, yeah, so that so that's a thing that happens. So um, it's not. Um, it's just part of his plan, right, because when he's going to make his move, He's going to have her uh, give the gift of death and the dust and the and I will say this. I will say this. I'm already coming out hot and I'm um, I'm crapping all over this thing. And I don't like to talk negatively about stuff because it's hard to make stuff and not everything is for everyone. And there's going to be people that love this that are like, this is amazing. Like I, I watch a show and it's so much fun and. And just throw and and there's stuff that that I watch that you could pick apart and say that doesn't make any sense and I'm like I don't care it's fun uh, this was not that for me so I will just say that and stand on that um, but yes so the thing I did like about this I like the idea of cr pl uh, implanting someone throughout all of time and space that will then give your gift of death and then not only destroying the universe, but destroying the universe through time. Um, and they do a, 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 a connection between memory and time, and they're the same thing. So, uh, you know, because of memory, we have time. And if you get rid of time, you lose memory. And they play with that. And there's a scene later where this very... Uh, the whole thing also feel... It feels like 
they've cut several scenes and sections out of this. Like everything is very fast and very rushed with just very little, it feels development. Like all of a sudden now something's happening. Oh, now we're in a, uh, we're in Arrakis and we're at, uh, Siech Tabor, and now we're talking to a woman who's going to share her spoons. She's going to share her spoons with a doctor. Her last spoon. She can't remember that baby's dead. That was a little dark. I won't be honest. I'll be honest, I'm saying. Of course I'll be honest. Uh, that, that dead baby uh, was um, was hard. Uh, so, yes. So, the, the doctor learns that he's been carrying around this Sutek and his his uh you know the Susan twist and she's in position so when the dust comes out it kills everyone so we see many major characters die so we watch Kate die then we watch um uh Ruby's adoptive mother die and her grandmother die and Mrs. Flood dies right and then you're like okay Okay, and when once that happened, like when you when Kate died, I was genuinely like, "Oh my, they killed Kate. This is awful, but it has meaning because there's stakes, and if a character dies, they're going to die." And then immediately as you started seeing more and more people die, all of that goes away and all the tension is just immediately diffused because you're like, "Of course they're they're all coming back." And then it's like, is this just a big metaphor for people that's saying that they're you're killing Doctor Who, Doctor Who R.I.P. And they literally just kill all of all of Doctor Who. And I think even uh, Shooty Got was Doctor at one point looks at the camera and says, "I've killed Doctor Who." Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'd uh, where do where do there there was just so much info, so much explain. I'm not. I'm gonna save all of the Ruby Sunday stuff to the end. A lot of explaining, a lot of getting into the memory tar. And I I understand the memory TARDIS was cool. Dan and I watched several Tales of the TARDIS episode, episodes on YouTube. We can't watch it here in the states, but. Uh, in the UK, they had they've been playing these things and they're showing old Doctor Who and they're in the memory charts and it's an interesting framing device for revisiting these beautiful, wonderful stories with the companions and the doctors. Now, I love that. Uh, you sort of let some of that stuff go where it's like, oh, they're in a memory charts and you're like, oh, that's cute, that's a way. Now it's part of this story. Like the doctor hides in the memory TARDIS and they use the memory TARDIS as a second TARDIS. And I'm not a, I'm not really sure how that is a thing that there's just a, another TARDIS that's made of memories. You know what I mean? And I feel like at one point, and I, this is my fault because I overthink all of this stuff and I'm sitting here for the last you know, eight weeks talking about all oh, their brother and sister and they're both timeless children. And, and I'm talking about Mavity and I'm talking about collapsing universes. And I had convinced myself too, that like, Oh, this show is about the show. And there was a couple of points like during this episode where I'm like, Oh, that's not actually Sutek. There's some real evil, like next level thinking is outside of the show that has adopted the persona of Sutek because it's a, been observing Doctor Who outside of the form. Like, it's outside of time. It's outside of the form of the show. That's why there's fourth wall break. No. Is there just fourth wall breaking because there's just fourth wall breaking? I think so. I mean, I like when the Doctor's saying, I thought the music was like... Is any I, it doesn't seem like any of that is has any meaning, um, you know at all. Like they end this with um, a magic rope and a magic whistle. That's like how they get at they get at it. Their spoon is not as important. The spoon, I guess, is to watch old the the uh, pyramids of Mars. Like if you were like, oh, that's that's me. Which I also hate, too, because it's like, it's not how you would remember it. It's the show. You're just watching footage of the show. 
You know what I mean? Like it's not the doctor's memory. You don't remember yourself of how you look because you always would look, you know, I don't know. That's fine. It's all fine. He turns the TV into an iPad that they hook up because they got to go to 2040, whatever, to do it to do a DNA test. But Unit has no idea who this woman is because thank God they had that law that everyone had to have a, a DNA test. Um, Sutek's always been there. Now, in Pyramids of Mars, Sutek has to take over uh, the doctor's mind to pilot the TARDIS. That's not a thing anymore. I guess because the Sutek's been attached to the TARDIS. It's learned how to drive it without the doctor. I mean, that's a part of the story of Pyramids of Mars, that that's why they Sutek does not kill the doctor. You know, once he pilots the TARDIS to, I think at that point they go to Mars, he says to, um, it's fine. We don't need to go through Pyramids of Mars. Because in this one, all of a sudden his helpers can just fly around in the TARDIS. And um, I also am tired of the, the nostalgia dumping, which is a thing that happens often in Star Wars stuff. Not all Star Wars stuff. Like that's that's why I like Andor so much because that is a show that stands on its own, and that is a really cool, well written, well acted, well directed show within the Star Wars universe. That is great. I really like that show. It's it's top top tier uh, versus some of the stuff that they'll do in some other Star Wars shows where it's like, hey, you remember this? Hey, you remember this? You like that? Hey, look. And you get a ton of that in the uh, memory TARDIS and in this. And it's like, oh, there's there's Tom Baker's scarf. And, oh, this is from that. And, and I get that. And I and it, it does appeal to me having reviewed 10 years of Classic Who episodes to see that stuff. But I don't like when that stuff just becomes a thing for, like, an easy emotional connection if it doesn't have any real weight and I don't know. I, I, it's fine. I guess that's fine. That was like the least of my thing. But there is a lot of like that nostalgia dumping that is. It feels like it's a Disney thing. And it. But I, I. I don't know. I mean, Russell T. Davies. As far as I can tell, this is all coming from him. It's not like oh we like that so do it. I think he also likes it. And God bless him. He's a very successful uh, writer. And I've loved stuff that he's done. Like I still love 73 yards. I think that's brilliant. Um, and I'm glad we have that, uh, story. I, I, you know, I thought I'm glad, I'm glad of that. I'm glad that there's that compared to what happens at the end of this, which we will get to. All right. So there's a lot of info. There's the magic rope that they eventually get out of. There is the magic whistle. Uh, the doctor cries again a lot. And with each time, it has less weight uh, to it because it's happening all of the time. Um, so there's that. It's all that. It all feels so fast. I, again, I really do like Sutek too. Um, we get to meet that woman again I mentioned where I talked about as if it were on, on Arrakis. We don't know that woman. We don't spend enough time with that woman to have any kind of emotional connection to her. So we have a baby that is died. Because who, what kind of monster isn't going to feel something for a mother that loses her baby? So, But that just feels a little cheap because we, we haven't invested in this character at all. Like, have a scene like that with someone that we've grown to care about and have that have meaning and... But so you just have that scene in there so that when at the end you can look at it and be like, everything's fine. And again, at the end, it's like the Superman flying around the earth in the opposite direction and everything goes back to normal and there is no death. Like if you had a heart attack like minutes before the dust of Sutek, are you still alive? Is it all creatures? Is it just humans? Is it uh, insects? Is it going to be an overpopulation moment? Like is the hospitals, everyone's just going to pop up off the table that would have died anyway? I understand that's dumb to think about it that way, um, and I'm I'm mostly kidding, but I I don't like that because 
it just erases all of the stakes all of the weight of everything and that this whole episode i felt like erased and just undid anything that you had invested in and anything kind of approaching meaning or a new way of looking at things and it was just like other you know i don't know i i guess we eventually have to get to the end of this um and I'm still hold. I'm still holding on. Like where you're like, we haven't met the dad, you know. And I and it's like that's not. I mean, what am I? What am I? Uh, complete moron to be still like uh, falling for this crap where you're just no. But it's Brindle D, and if you rearrange the the letters, it wasn't the mom. It was Brindle. And by the way, when you when we find out who her mom, okay, we're not. We're, Save. I'm gonna save that again. Why do people keep telling the doctor he has a nice face? It feels a little weird, right? Like everything's just based on his face. Like that seems uh, almost insulting. That multiple. Well, you have a nice face, and multiple characters. It's not just that woman. It's like multiple characters are saying, like, uh, even um, when he meets who he thinks is Susan Foreman. Uh, that is just the um, Sutex creation person. And now, does she have kids in this world? It doesn't matter. Um, she says, like, oh, you're so handsome and a pretty face. And, like, he's more than a face. <sighs> so, I don't know. Is the dad anyone? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, so, yeah. So, they eventually, they're like, the reason why Sutek has not killed us is because Sutek knows everything but who this woman is because he can't find her. He can't. He's in every time that the doctor landed. I mean, I guess maybe the doctor would have landed at some point when they had DNA testing. Can't Sutek just run a DNA test. I guess he doesn't have her blood. That's fine. I guess he can't fi- he can't find it because she is so ordinary. Is that what it because we've made her so important that unit can't figure it out. And then they get her Instagram pictures. They get her Instagram pictures on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, that point, um, it was rough. Uh, yeah, so we go to 2046. We go to 23 and Me's headquarters. Uh, she does the blood test. Mel is hearing voices. Uh, and she turns into Sutex servant. But the doctor, we don't know, but the doctor had figured it out by touching. Thank God he touched her hand. Uh, luckily, he touched her hand and was able to figure out that and was like, I got a jump rope. And a whistle, and you got, remember the magic gloves, put the magic gloves on, and we'll just, we'll lasso the dog, and then drag the dog from the car. Poor little guy, probably kept up with you for a mile or so. And they, uh, they run the DNA test, and they can't finish it, and then they, they, uh, they drag the dog from the space car. And, uh. Then they, it's over, all right? And then they go back to unit. They go back to unit, and uh, they're able to finish the, the DNA test. And they get her Instagram role. It's the mom. She had given the ruby up when she was uh, 15 and didn't tell the dad that come, that little bit of information. The dad had no idea that she was pregnant. But they're going to track him down. Um, yeah, and so the mom was nothing, and we had created the. Everybody thought she was. Why was it snowing? Um, now again, again, I'm like not wanting to let go. I'm wanting to say, 
No. Next season, because there is the thing about her understanding 73 yards that this is all does have, but it doesn't have meaning. Like, there's no way you're ending the season like this and going through all of that stuff that very much like it felt like the, is it the last Jedi? Is that the name of the second of the new Star Wars movies where they're like, Ray, you're nobody. You're average. Your parents are average. And then they undid that. Like, I don't think it's going to, they, I don't think they would do that same thing twice the way they did in those Star Wars movies. It's just that she's, was a regular, just a, a regular mom who loved uh, her daughter enough to abandon her in the snow on a doorstep um, and point at the sign to name her. Who is she pointing at? She's named. Who is around to to know that? Write it on a post-it note. Like, get a, a letter and write to my daughter Ruby. I'm sorry, I had to. Blah, you put all that stuff down, and it says I want her to name her Ruby. You don't just randomly point at a sign. She was naming me to who? To who? To who? 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 Na- who names? Who names someone that? With their finger. Um. So Mrs. Flood's back, right? And she's still clearly a time lord. She has broken the fourth wall. I don't know if that means anything at all anymore is she the ronnie i don't know if i care uh i do care because that was dan dan was holding on that she's the ronnie I-, I almost think she's susan except for you know i the last time we talked i was sitting here saying maybe susan is ruby's mother and then ruby was gonna die and regenerate instead of just going up to her uh her biological mother and then having that very quick emotional scene because you only get two, two or three minutes for the emotion and we got to get there quick. And then we go and then everybody's a friendly. It would be weird if you were the adoptive mother and family of your adoptive kid. And then all of a sudden you brought your, there would be tension and weird because that's how humans are. Doesn't mean it's right, but that's like when characters have depth the way they did in uh, uh, 73 yards, which was perfect because it showed weight and, 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 and uh, you know, struggling with relationships and all of that stuff that felt like real. And then this comes and it's like everybody, and then we're they're calling the guy, and he's gonna be like, "What happened? You had a kid? I didn't have a kid. I uh, pointed at a sign outside, and they named the I don't know how they knew they named the baby Ruby. I pointed at the sign. Who is this? Why are you calling my house? That's gonna be happening. Um, so they're all they're all doing um, they're all having that little. Christmas party or whatever's going on. The doctor goes into the TARDIS, the regular TARDIS. I don't remember. I think I blacked out at this point. What happened to the memory? T- is the memory TARDIS still around? It's just hanging out, wait, just waiting for Colin Baker to, to come back and, and talk about um, what was that uh, Colin Baker story where he had the axe in like the fun house thing? It was in the trial of a, a Time Lord. It doesn't matter. Um, man, I love Pyramids of Mars, by the way. I love it. Um, uh, yeah, I really love that. I love, I love all of. It's fine. I, I, this was a. I'm not going to talk about the season. I'm going to save that for Dan because I want to talk to Dan about this. So I'm going to hold my over. I would say though that I was sort of like going in an kind of in an upward thing, and I, sometimes something hits you so wrong. That it like retroactively makes you rethink all of the things that you thought about previous uh, stories. So this was it for me. And then Mrs. Flood again talks to the camera, breaking the fourth wall, uh, saying this was a nice story. That was the end of Ruby Sunday. Nothing means anything. It was snowing. Magic snow. Uh, 
Magic Snow was there uh, because the mom was... What was it again? Because because we made it out to be so important that Magic Snow. Uh, yeah, so Miss Flood says, no, the, the doctor, he's going to have a horrible death because um, I'm the Ronnie or I'm his angry granddaughter, Susan. No, because I think they would use, they would, uh, Susan Foreman would be played um, by the actress whose name I can't remember right now. So apologies uh, to you. I mean, there's so much old, like, I like that they're bringing back old stuff. And I love Mel. I'm so happy to, I thought she was great. I thought she was, I would have liked to have more scenes with Mel doing stuff. I liked all of that. Um, but my point was they bring so much stuff with the old show back. And then it's like, but what is it really for? What is it all, any of it for? What am I doing? Why did I decide uh, to do this? Um, why did I decide to do this? Why? Why? And she tells the okay. So at the end, then she goes into the TARDIS. She's like, "Hey, where we can go? Go wherever you want." And you know, as a viewer, that she's not supposedly coming back, or this is her only season. So you're like, "Well, this is gonna end somehow." And so you kind of feel it coming. And you and in all credit. Uh, all credit where credit is due. You feel that in the writing that it is the end of their relationship. Uh, and so she keeps getting this call and she's like, this is my dad. We traced him back. His parents never left. His parents never left. So. It's 2024 and I have a 23 in me and an ancestry. Uh, you think they'd be able to find a hit on the father, let alone the mother. Uh, yep, just ordinary person. Ordinary people. Goddamn ordinary people. Hey, look, look at that. Look at those assholes over there. Ordinary fucking people. I hate them. Why aren't I doing like a Repo Man podcast? Um, yeah, so I guess I'm going to end it here. I, I said I did not like it. Um, I didn't think it was good. Um I should say, I did not like it. It wasn't for me. If you enjoyed it, I think that's fantastic. If it got you to watch Pyramids of Mars, I think that's even better. Um, I'm very disappointed. You know, and a lot of that is on me building stuff up and hoping that it's going to be this weird, wild thing that I, that's going to break the mold of Doctor Who forever. And and it it isn't that. And it... and um, there's magic ropes and magic whistles and magic gloves. Till next time.